Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Melissa Melton, and here's what we have in store for you on this December 7th, 2012 edition. Tonight, NATO says military intervention in Syria is imminent. Then, Congress pushes to hand over drone oversight to the DHS. Plus, learn how the Obama administration is considering responding to the legal pot in Colorado and Washington. That's coming up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Our top story tonight, NATO military intervention into Syria is now imminent. According to Paul Joseph Watson, sources close to the French Defense Ministry have reported today that a Western Arab military intervention against the Assad regime is due to begin shortly. And the report adds that the assault would be modeled on the Western intervention in Libya in 2011, and the attack could be preceded by an announcement that Assad has used chemical weapons. And I just want to remind everyone that six months ago, a report also came out showing that Syrian opposition actually got their hands on those chemical weapons, that they were training to use them in Turkey, and that the plan was they would use them against civilians and then blame that on the Assad regime. And as InfoWars has reported a myriad of ways, uh, we have also, our United States government and NATO powers have linked themselves to the rebels there in Syria, just like we did in Libya, that are linked to al-Qaeda terrorists. These are the same terrorists that were bad and blamed on 9-11 and were killing our troops in Iraq, and yet now we're actually siding with them. And I just pray that they don't actually use those weapons, but when you hear that in the media, you have to wonder who actually has these chemical weapons anyway. So I pray that those people are safe and that they don't use those. Moving on, the Obama administration is considering responding to legal pot now in Colorado and Washington in two different ways. The first is a task force made up of Maine Justice, the DEA, the State Department, and the Office of National Drug Control Policy is currently considering two courses of action here. One is for federal prosecutors to bring cases against low-level marijuana users in the hopes that they will make a motion to dismiss the case because the drug is legal, and then the department could obtain a court ruling saying that federal law trumps state. And the other option is for the Justice Department to file lawsuits against the states to prevent them from setting up systems to regulate and tax marijuana. And what you really have to wonder is what, what is the government's idea of justice here? I mean, recently we've seen a man in Montana who, who was set to receive 80 years in federal prison because he had a medicinal marijuana dispensary and was giving out marijuana to people for medical reasons, which was legally okay in his state. He's set to receive 80 years. That's what federal prosecutors are pushing for. And yet you've got former Penn State football coach Jerry Sandusky who molested 10 boys over a 15-year period, which amounted to dozens of charges, and they only gave him 30 years. So which, which crime here is doing more harm to society? A man who is legally in his state giving out medicine to people who are sick to try and give them reprieve from cancer? Or a man who has sexually assaulted boys for years and they have to live with that for the rest of their lives? And this is what our government considers justice. It's really a travesty. And continuing on with government travesties, the TSA is now honoring employees for their outstanding performance. Apparently in Hawaii there was a, an award ceremony and the TSA gave people awards for their glorious service. Um, the spokesperson said that it's been 10 years since the TSA took over security at the airports and a lot of people who rolled out the operation are still with the firm. Well, you know who isn't with the firm would be all of the outed thieves, drug dealers, child molesters, kidnappers and rapists who while working at the TSA committed those crimes and all of the people who quit working at the TSA because they refused to molest people and try to enforce Americans into this government indoctrination into this government control program. But at least we can all rest assured that the TSA is keeping us safe from terrorists, right? Well, unfortunately, we can't do that because they've never caught even a single terrorist at all. And speaking further on the TSA, another Orlando airport is set to evict the TSA. Um, Orlando International Airport said it could follow its neighbor, Orlando Sanford, in seeking to replace the government agency with private screeners. My guess is that Disneyland is losing huge profits because 
international tourists don't even want to come here. They don't want to mess with the TSA. We have some of the most aggressive measures that we have to deal with at our airports. And people from other countries aren't used to that. And they're probably just like, forget it. Mickey Mouse isn't even worth it. The Greater Orlando Aviation Authority chairperson Frank Krupenbacher actually said, I could care less about the politics of all this. All I care about is seeing those customers smiling, saying, I love the airport and I love Orlando. Well, Mr. Krupenbacher, unfortunately, no one is ever going to smile and say they love the airport when a family with a three-year-old wheelchair-bound little boy is just trying to go to Disneyland to see Mickey Mouse, but first he has to go to the airport, get groped by old men, and have his wheelchair swabbed for bomb residue. No one's going to be loving the airport under those circumstances. So evict the TSA. That's the best hope you've got. Recently, the Harvard School of Health looked at more than a dozen scientific studies concerning fluoride and confirmed what countless other scientists have been documenting for decades. Sodium fluoride in the body reduces IQ and increases cancers. You see, the aluminum industry and the fertilizer industries would have to pay to store all the toxic waste they produce, but instead they get our counties and cities to pay to put the poison in our water. It's not just fluoride we're getting, but lead, mercury, arsenic, the list goes on and on. And a lot of this toxic waste comes from China. Unfortunately, fluoride and its derivatives are only one of hundreds of toxins being added to our drinking water. We're battling the globalist on so many fronts. Health is an area where we can all take control of our lives, and it all starts with that basic building block of water. It is time to purify our family's water. The Pro Pure Filtration System with added fluoride filters is the best system for my research to protect you and your family. Infowarstore.com already has the lowest prices on Pro Pure water filtration. But until December 10th, we are going to offer 15% off the already lowest price. I know what I'm giving my family this Christmas Pro Pure. Go to Infowarstore.com and get 15% off the already lowest price out there with the code WATER15. WATER15, and you get 15 15% off at InfoWarStore.com.